Hi, this is Terry Mead. Welcome back to my channel. I am recording this the day after International Women's Day, which was a whole 23 hours of a day, not quite 24, which seemed to be somewhat uh, symbolic in that not only did we not have a full day of celebration when really every day we should be celebrating and supporting and promoting women, but we didn't even have 24 hours because of the change in uh, daylight savings time, which made for, I guess, some very cranky people this morning who struggled to get out of bed, and I actually missed a conference call. So fortunately, it was another gal, and she was very, very understanding, and we've rescheduled for tomorrow. The other thing that happened um, is I don't think we were able to actually celebrate it because so much has been canceled with the coronavirus or the COVID-19. And this pandemic, which is sweeping the globe in a not so good way, meant that uh, I had an event that was canceled. I had a book event scheduled for the Mountain View Library on Saturday that was canceled on Friday at about 4.54 p.m. About? Okay, it was maybe 4.55 p.m. <laughs> anyway, it was right before the guy left for the weekend and he called to tell me that the Mountain View Library, um, based on the recommendations of the county, um, we're canceling all non-essential events and large events. Was that mean? Does that mean that was going to be a large event? That was uh, these events that were scheduled at um, various different places within the county. So that meant that Saturday I was freed up, uh, unfortunately, because I was really looking forward to talking about midlife and opportunities and how midlife is an opportunity and not a crisis with. Um, some people that I knew who were going to be coming and then some people who had not heard me speak about it. And then it rained, weirdly, uh, and my tennis match got canceled. So Saturday ended up being a really wackadoodle day. It ended up being a bit of an interesting weekend since my son was home from San Diego State for the weekend and it was great to see him and have time at dinner to spend and catch up on what's been going on with him. We had nachos. Oh, we had amazing nachos. Anyway, um, it, just, it, it just meant that I was seeing a lot of stuff online about International Women's Day and I saw a lot of women posting about, you know, the, the cute Wonder Woman graphics or the lifting up graphics and I didn't actually see a lot of men doing much to support International Women's Day. Uh, I had two men uh, call out some of us. So um, my friend Manny and my friend Tyler, both of them called out me and a couple of other women for which I'm really, really grateful. But it was uh, oddly uncelebrated. It seemed to have gotten lost in the shuffle of the weekend and uh, COVID-19 and the um, pissing contest between Saudis and Russia around oil and it really kind of found felt like a non-event. Uh, I haven't looked to see what the results were today in Mexico because the women walked out um, and do the men actually even care? Do, does society actually even care? My friend Elizabeth Edwards with H Ventures reminded me of a statistic and it's pretty sad that it's going to take another 200 years for us to be at gender parity, which is roughly seven generations. Seven generations. She put out on social media a challenge to all of us with portfolios to ask who's managing our funds. Who, are, there an, are there women managing our funds? What percentage of our funds are being managed by women? And to share in a hashtag, hashtag her worth in order to really um, showcase and highlight just really how awful the situation is. She has two young daughters, and so she wants to make sure that the world is a better place for not only her, but also for her daughters, and then also the rest of the women around the world. And this is where I think we can claim our power in working together to try to make a difference. This is where we really need to be intentional about supporting each other, about buying from women, about knowing where the products that we purchase or the services that we purchase come from, and to do a, do a much better job about being very intentional about um, using our buying power. In the healthcare space, we make, what is it, 85 to 90% of healthcare decisions, and we control 75 to 80 cents out of every dollar that goes through our pocketbooks. We do have the power 
but it does require a little extra energy to understand who we're purchasing from. There are apps and websites and services that make it um, make who you're purchasing from more visible so that you can be intentional about choosing to purchase from women. Women tend to put more money back to their community, into their societies. And Melinda Gates talks about in her book, Moment of Lift, about how when we raise women, we raise societies. And I strongly believe that this is uh, true. Um, if you don't believe me, believe Melinda Gates and the data that's in her book. And so we must do what we can to support all women, not just middle class white women and not just white women, but all women and those who identify as women are included in there as well. I watched a really amazing documentary called She Did That about black women entrepreneurs and what they have done with their businesses, how they've succeeded and what they're doing to really make a difference in their communities and for other black women. And I think all of us need to be watching these kinds of documentaries and supporting women of of all kinds, not just ones that look like us or come from the same backgrounds. And once again, it comes back to being very intentional. It's easy to stay within our circles, but if we are on social media and we choose to follow some people who don't look like us or don't come from the same backgrounds, whether it's on Twitter or Instagram, or on LinkedIn if we try to connect and follow and support. And we also need to actively support and promote. So if you see someone has written something or you've heard about something, try to help promote that woman in order to help her succeed. Because when we come together to support each other, we have, once again, a tremendous amount of power. We make up over 50% of the population and we need to start acting like it. We also need to start acting like we control our buying power and not just do the same old, same old and go with the default, but find um, sites like Doe, D-O-U-G-H. And yes, I will put a link in the description about how you can get access to some of these sites that make it easier. Um, I think in the documentary they talked about um, uh, purchasing from black women, especially in certain months of the year, and I am going to try to get some of those companies on my list. So when I'm looking for something, I, um, I look for greater diversity in who I'm choosing to purchase from so that I use my buying power to try to make a difference. I've been trying to watch and listen to watch more videos or watch more movies or listen to more podcasts from people who aren't like me so that I have greater awareness, sensitivity, and I learn so that I'm uh, a little less myopic and a little less um, oblivious about what's going on with women who are not necessarily like me. It's one of the reasons why one of my favorite podcasts is The Secret Lives of Black Women. If you're not listening to it, I highly recommend that you do. Season three is coming out. I am so happy that it is no longer on hiatus because I look forward to that every single Thursday. One of the other things I was thinking about is a lot of us women think that we have to be 100% qualified or 110% qualified to do something before we go after it. And I am actively trying to not be like that. Like the, the chapter in Feminist Fight Club, What Would Josh Do? Josh is a mediocre white guy and he certainly doesn't have to be 100% qualified for anything and he doesn't need to have the confidence to go after it. So. I am actively trying to go after things that are a bit of a stretch because I know I can figure it out. I've proven that I've been able to figure it out up until this point, and I challenge you to do the same. Look for opportunities that are a stretch. Say yes to those things, even though you might feel a little bit, you know, less than confident about it. And just trust that you'll be able to rely on past experience and um, your ability to figure things out. But that also means saying no to things that are, you know, really outside your scope or um, uh, that allow you to set your boundaries so that you do have time and bandwidth to take on new opportunities. When I finished my master's degree, I refused to get coffee for or make coffee for anybody. It was one of those things where I just drew the line at. And it was really hard as a woman who was raised as, to be the uh, hostess with the mostest to not you know, to not do that. 
but by saying, nope, got my master's degree, I'm not getting coffee, it meant that I couldn't be um, relegated to the administrative position in, in a meeting, and I could step up and command the uh, authority, command the responsibilities, and then also command the power and the money that went along with that. And uh, it can be hard to say no when we are so used to being conditioned and socialized to say yes. So say yes, even though you might be uncomfortable, and say no, even though it might be uncomfortable. And you'll know the situation. I absolutely guarantee it. The final thing I'm going to say to everyone, not just the women who are listening, but to men, International Women's Day should not have to exist. The fact that it does just pisses me off. We should be promoting and supporting and uh, seeing women as valuable assets within our community and within our society every single day. So if you're not doing something every day to support and promote other women, start doing it. Just one little thing. It's like what I did in October with the Lift Not Drag Challenge. Do one little thing every single day, whether it's to buy something from a woman, support a woman, um, help give her lift so that she can accomplish great things. But let's do what we can to come together to really support women, to really, you know, I really believe it, we can change the world. And right now with everything that's going on, we women are going to have to be the ones to uh, really make a difference. So let's all take on the challenge to do that. And with that, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Until next week, let go of perfection, take some risks, and above all else, have fun.